Thank you, sir. I invite Dr. Chinme Hegre, Managing Director, Estricos Consulting Private Limited. A very warm welcome. I invite Mr. Webhav Chauhan, Head Smart City and Traffic, CMS Computers. I invite Mr. Shailesh Purohit, Business Head, Smart Cities, Display Solutions, Business Unit, Delta Electronics, India Private Limited. I invite Mr. Saurabh Agarwal, CEO, Tech Bridge, to kindly join us on the stage. I invite Mr. Brijesh Miglani, SSE Security Strategist, Force Point, and also our distinguished chairperson for this session, Dr. Sumit D. Chaudhary, founder, chairman, and MD, GIA Smart Cities. A warm welcome to you, sir. It's Gaia. Dr. Sumit founder, chairman in MD, Gaia Smart Cities. He will be chairing this session. Once again, inviting all our speakers. I invite Mr. Prashant Oberoi, Head National Sales, E-Governance, Northern Communication. We have on the stage with us Dr. Chinme Hegre. He is Managing Director, Estricos Consulting Private Limited. May I invite Mr. Webhav Chauhan, Head Smart City and Traffic, CMS Computers. May I invite Mr. Shailesh Purohit, Business Head, Smart Cities, Display Solutions Business Unit, Delta Electronics, India Private Limited. May I invite Mr. Saurabh Agarwal, CEO, TechBridge, and Mr. Brijesh Miglani, SSE Security Strategist, Force Point. So ladies and gentlemen, the theme for this session is digital transformation of Indian cities towards smarter, sustainable, and safer future. And the time duration for the session is approximately one hour, 30 minutes, which includes the opening and closing remarks by the distinguished chair and presentations by all our eminent speakers for about 15 minutes each. And we shall have question and answers in the end if the time permits. So may I now invite our uh, session chair, Dr. Sumit D. Chaudhary, for the opening remarks. Over to you, sir. We've got everybody. Um, I think please join us here. So uh, many of you would have, uh, this, this session is on digitization of uh, smart cities. Um, and uh, I would like to introduce the topic by uh, going by, uh, by a couple of things, many of you have heard this thing called water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink, right? Have you heard, the, heard that, uh, um, uh, was it a nursery rhyme or something? I thought, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like when you're out in the sea, there is lots of water, but you can't drink it really, right? So when we started working in cities, there was a lot of paper, paper everywhere, but no insight, right? Everybody had a lot of paper, then digitization started happening. So digitization said, let's put systems in place. Then there was a lot of data, data everywhere, but no analysis there also. Then came all these models of AI and machine learning and everything, and they now said lots of analysis. Now we have got analysis, analysis everywhere, which is the right one, right? Lots of experts have come, which expert to choose? And throughout this journey, one thing you realize that you need to you need to digitize, you need to have the data, but you also need to know how to, how to analyze that data to come up with meaningful decisions that are appropriate for you. There was a time when you would have a hypothesis, you took that hypothesis and you then went and did an experiment to collect data. Once you did the experiment to collect data, you said whether the hypothesis was true or false. You could do a PhD doing this same process over and over and over again. New hypothesis, new data, yes or wrong. Now what we do is that we have a hypothesis, we decide whether we want to prove it or disprove it, then collect data, then beat the data till we prove or disprove the hypothesis we are in. <laughs> data can say whatever story if you beat it long enough, as they say, right? If you beat data long enough, it will tell whatever story you want. So this session is ab about Digitization, data, understanding the data, 
presenting the data in meaningful ways in which decisions can be taken. So I've got a distinguished panel with me today. We are all going to debate and as I did in the last uh, session also, I'm going to throw some fire under some people here and there and uh, we'll have an interesting conversation. So um, we'll, we'll start with you, sir. Uh, Saurabh, right? Yeah. Saurabh, uh, we'll start with you today and um, we'll get your opinion on this topic and based on your opinion, I'll throw more questions at you later. The mic is with you, so um, the, the, as, as I said, the, the, the session is on digital transformation of cities. Everybody is, unless you do this, you won't succeed, so right, what do you think? Correct, so uh, in my view and as uh, we see that uh, there is lots of silos around. So we have been, as you rightly mentioned, there is all data all around, but uh, the datas are not talking to each other. We have lots of silos. And we need to see that how we bring uh, the data to a meaningful conclusion. How do we do okay. meaningful presentation of the data mm. across the board? Mm. So we have been talking about these things a lot for so many years, uh, last five, seven years. Mm. But uh, uh, that is a real challenge that we have seen, observed and across the board. And very important for everyone to understand that uh, how uh, we see that something is happening, what is happening and how do we react to that situation. And obviously uh, people sitting at the top or in the middle layer, they should understand the holistically how the digitization is impacting the whole ecosystem. So yes, correctly said, uh, data and analysis of the data is very, very critical and to see the whole data as a connected piece of system. That is what I would uh, like to start with. So I was told that all of you have presentations which uh, I w did not know. So if you have a presentation, do you want to um, go up first or? Um, I can take it up. That's uh, okay. So please. Um, uh, who, um, there's a sequence. Oh, there's a speaker one. Yes. Uh, so yeah, Prashant, uh, you are the speaker one. So uh, I would um, uh, ask you to go and do your presentation. Thank you. Mm. I'm sorry. Good morning, all. Uh, we are close to about good afternoon. Uh, and since we are talking about uh, digital transformation and we are talking about all the data around, the question is how does data is captured, especially when we are talking about the context of smart cities? One of the big component is surveillance cameras, which are not about, which can be for general surveillance or for the intelligent traffic monitoring purpose, face recognition, which I will cover in my presentation. Can we have the presentation up? Okay. Uh, just a brief about Norden. We started about uh, close to 20 years ago and uh, we, we are a UK headquartered company and uh, over the years we have presence about more than 20 countries today with a direct presence and a uh, few other countries captured with partners uh, having all the probably all the global standards certified in terms of surveillance, secure, surveillance security connectivity and cabling solutions. Uh, very recently we have gone into public address system and few other areas of access control as well. A general product range I have is the surveillance, public address, access control, racks and cabinets. They, these are things which we are doing globally. However, in India, currently we are focused very much on surveillance and connectivity systems and adding the PA and the access control into the range in India. Balanced products, un, as of now, we are not doing in India. So I would uh, restrict myself more on the surveillance, all about surveillance because we are talking about the digital transformation, all about smart cities and mobility and all. that's the theme of the, today. The surveillance system in the smart city can consist of different level of uh, data coming in from different cameras for different purposes. 
most important is the purpose of the output what we require be it a general purpose camera surveillance camera which can be used for incident detection later or it is a real time monitoring of traffic situation and enforcement purpose when we say different variables data coming out it could be the face recognition system the intelligent traffic monitoring system of having automatic number plate recognition wherein we are eliminating human intervention and thereby reducing any so called controversial effect between the two humans in terms of enforcement and the guy who is on the road the red light violation detection speed violations so this is all about the violation in the enforcement system no helmet illegal parking the, there are few specialized product which i am touching upon and there is a lot of cameras which we have put at the back which people can have a touch and feel of the things whereas we are talking about a small bullet camera capturing a range of 100 meters on a 4k 5 to 50 meter length which as soon as i use word 4k i start looking left because i know the next presentation is about all about that so anyway uh, moving forward the there are now the cameras huge cameras which we have deployed which can enforce of late we have seen lot of express ways coming and in express ways we know the speed of the vehicle is very high and imagine a situation that somebody is illegally stopping a vehicle which could danger uh, endanger the life of other guys on the road so we have cameras put up which is uh, mort guideline as well as nhai guideline that you need to read the number plate of a vehicle standing 500 meters away from the camera in the night so those kind of cameras are also available and we have already implemented few stretches these are cameras for specialized applications for your explosion proof and corrosion proof oil rigs mines uh space and space launch vehicles those places where these uh, which can take huge amount of temperature range as well as the up to a level of explosion also that it doesn't ha happen anything to the camera and it can capture all the activity there thermal cameras for multiple applications be it the uh, security applications on the border be it the wildlife sanctuaries where you need to track if there is a illegal human activity where the humans are not supposed to be there uh dmzs where again you don't need to have a unidentified object in a dmz those kind of applications the thermal cameras with the small range as well as range up to 50 kilometers few products uh, few projects which we have already delivered is for one of the prestigious project is food and civil supplies department having more than 6000 cameras in a single installation varanasi smart city noida itms trivandrum itms nhai few other names very uh, cutting across all the verticals be it your atomic energy or education enterprise different government verticals airports another data coming in and data dissemination it is not only the data which is incoming the data dissemination the public address system which are being put up in most of the smart cities or the particular area where the information can be disseminated at a point of time as and when required the public address system a uh, few things which are part of public in intervention system public address system the ip based speakers which are integrated and can be created zone wise over a pan city network or the city can be divided into multiple zones and different information can be disseminated in different zones all that flexibility just being on the ip we can create n number of zones whatever 
authorities want these are digital conference system for the boardroom solution and the conference systems presentation i would limit myself to this if there is anything anybody wants to ask a question can ask a question yes sir can we get the mic there please can we reach the mic to them please how do we ensure sing point of failure yeah and uh, diversity and in case of failure no i didn't get the second point sir diversity in case your camera fails then what will happen how will ensure monitoring should be 24 into 7 without any fail sir what are, what are first we need to identify what are the point of failures uh, point of failures could be the connectivity point of failure can be the network attached to it and the point of failure can be the camera itself these are the three point of failures which are there for the network as well as the connectivity failure uh, there are features available like sd card incorporated in the camera itself where the camera will start recording in the sd card itself and the whole recorded data will be sent to the central application as soon as the network connectivity or the network itself is revived that way is the data loss is not there however if the camera itself fails which is a possibility i will never say that camera doesn't fail ever but the possibility of camera being failure is based on our mtbfs less than a percentage unfortunately if our equipment fails it fails we don't have a option we have to replace it but if anything around it fails till the time it is on the data is available in the sd card and it can be passed on to the net central application as soon as the connectivity is restored thank you thank you prashant mm. yes sir mm. hello yeah my name is arun i represent a company called fitech embedded prashant ji mera aapse sirf ek question hai ki ye jo aap dikha rahe hain digital conference system kya ye india mein develop hua hai सॉरी सर क्या ये इंडिया में डेवलप हुआ है यस सर इट हैज ऑलरेडी बीन इंप्लीमेंटेड इन इंडिया नो आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग इंप्लीमेंटेड आई एम टॉकिंग वेदर इट इज डेवलप्ड इन इंडिया और नो एज ऑफ नाउ ऑल आर प्रोडक्ट्स आर डेवलप्ड एंड मैन्युफैक्चर्ड इन यूके सो हाउ कैन वी टेक दिस सिक्योरिटी एंड सर्वेलेंस व्हेन द थिंग्स आर गोइंग आउट ऑफ माय कंट्री हाउ कैन आई रिलाई ऑन यूके प्रोडक्ट और एनी प्रोडक्ट व्हिच इज बीन नॉट डेवलप्ड डिजाइंड एंड डेवलप्ड इन इंडिया okay let me answer it in two ways sir okay one first of all the data flowing out of this is all in india point number one so data is not going out of india because the connectivity is within a limited zone point number one it is not going out second following all the international standards and which make in india companies also follow the same standards it is the same guarantee which make in india component gives we are giving the same guarantee that the data doesn't flow out because as you say what is the guarantee it is not going out similar way what is the guarantee that make in india product there is no leakage because they also follow the global standards we are also following the global standards of security so that the data is secure प्रशांत जी आपने बहुत सही कहा कि व्हाट इज अ गारंटी दैट मेक इन इंडिया प्रोडक्ट डेटा कैन नॉट आउटफ्लो नो आई सेड इट्स सिक्योर नो सिक्योर्ड ओनली आई एम जस्ट टेलिंग यू दैट लॉट ऑफ गारंटीज हैज बीन गिवन बाय फेसबुक व्हाट्सएप गूगल एंड एवरीबडी इज इन ट्रैप इन सम ऑफ द कंट्री वेयर दे आर हैविंग द लीकेज ऑफ डेटा सो फॉर गेटिंग दिस गारंटीज एंड वॉरंटीज बेसिकली अनलेस एंड अंटिल वी डिजाइन आवर ओन प्रोडक्ट इन इंडिया like real atmanirbhar india should be there and that is possible when we have our own productions in I, last i, I in absolutely last, don't disagree with you yeah. i absolutely agree with you yeah. uh, that's why probably in the keynote address sajan touched upon the activity that 
we have already identified a place in bangalore where yeah. we are soon going to start uh, manufacturing these products in india yeah however again i would repeat it is the standards and the security systems which define the data security not where it is manufactured till the time we are following the standards laid down globally for any product the data is secure if we violate those standards data is not secure with any product even if we start manufacturing in india oh, it's okay I, I that's think, correct uh, uh, i think the point has been made hmm. let's move to the next point i think uh, he won't have a different answer right so let's um, yeah <laughs> very rightly said <laughs> okay a li little bit zooming out of that perspective right uh now obviously in uh, you know city surveillance and all that uh, one of the common problem is uh, if the camera is kind of uh, tampered uh, at two levels right one is the hardware level physical itself if somebody replaces the camera similar but a rogue camera right uh, and also by virtue of infosec right hacking and uh, those freeze frames and all that so how does your solution uh, you know protect from these kind of tamperings Okay. Physical layer and at a software layer, right? But that's very common. You can actually freeze a camera, right? Uh, and cities are not upgrading at the rate at which they need to upgrade. Of course, not their fault. But uh, hackers are improving faster than anybody else. That's a real problem for everybody, right? So, how does your solution, uh, you know, differentiate in this aspect? I would answer in two parts. One, uh, tampering is two types. One is a physical tampering. and one is a data tampering physical tampering is controlled because there are a lot of analytics already inbuilt into the cameras because as soon as you try to tamper physically put a cover on to it or throw something on it there is the last captured photograph available anybody however it may not be still so now i have to answer you on on the physical aspect itself i am not coming to the data aspect that i will cover physical aspect itself what if the person is not in front of the camera so for that we need to understand what is camera camera is nothing but a eye and if it is anything is visible to eye as a human also if somebody tries to attack you if you see him then only you can anticipate something similarly if camera sees something it can anticipate if it cannot see anything it cannot anticipate so unfortunately it is like a human eye one coming on to the data tampering as i said all these networks most of the public infrastructure networks are not hosted on the public network those are private networks they have their own checks and balances plus the cameras also have the securities of des and aes and all those security parameters there in the camera which you can enable to make sure the data tampering doesn't happen because that has nothing to do with what camera sees but it is like what the data flows the so both ways it is secure only physical tampering is only secure if the camera is able to see because it is just like a human eye it is like a extended eye nothing else physically is there any uh, mechanism that your camera uh, it will give an alert that's all it yeah, can do exactly so okay beyond an alert anything else sir camera cannot run away from the position unfortunately sure theek <laughs> 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 uh, i think uh, we need to move to the next presentation sure. our uh, second speaker is uh, we can take further questions after yes, this yes yes we will definitely after at the session finishes we'll um, everybody please write down and be succinct and if we don't repeat the same question we will be getting faster dr hegde uh, can we so so good morning good afternoon everybody right so intriguing uh, sessions since morning definitely intriguing controversial and then some commonality everything well so what i believe is let us address some solutions part right so that is where you know i am coming with some kind of a common solutions so that it everything everybody can come on a common ground 
Okay, my topic today is about uh, role of urban mobility and safety in smart city. Okay, so the one of the thing is how do we effectively utilize the implemented uh, mobility infrastructure? Do I have uh, something to change this? Or? Okay, does this work? No? Okay, fine. Just a quick... Uh, glimpse about uh, what we are and uh, what we do. So we are Astrico's consulting. We also have a flagship uh, you know, platform by name Astrico's.ai, which, uh, which sits in the command and control center of the cities, smart cities, and we are already in the smart cities across India around you know, the, um, the key cities such as who are dense cities as well as some of the remote areas, which we call remote areas, but that can, those cities are also getting significance nowadays, like northeast, you know, Indian cities of late uh, have becoming quite strategically important for India, right? So, such kind of cities also we have implemented uh, the smart city integrated command and control center uh, solutions and uh, some of the privates, because what we do is a smart infrastructure implementation for any kind of infrastructure. Infrastructure can be as small as a building, it could be as big as a city or a seaport or an airport. Right? So that is the size and scale of the infrastructure, we address any of them. Just to uh, you know, touch upon the agenda that I'm going to cover today is about, one is about the overview of a mobility system. I don't uh, always like to talk about uh, pointed product uh, related matters and this is my personal preference of course and my personal opinion that I want to talk take a particular uh, uh, problem statement and you know start analyzing that and probably arrive to a particular uh, solution where I would be showing you at the end of the session a particular capture or a video capture where we would have addressed such kind of a cases right use cases so that's the flow of my presentation will go ahead with the mobility ecosystem and the evolution, right? So one is, you know, when we talk about the urbanization, of course, there are urbanization challenges. There are various such kind of a challenges. Similarly, when we talk about the urban mobility, yes, if I ask the audience about the questions, I think we'll be done with today. That's it, right? So ur urban mobility is full of challenges. It's not easy domain to solve. We cannot, you know, think that idealistically that, okay, Delhi's or Bangalore's or Bombay's traffic problem will be solved. Yes, that's, you know, let us like similar to the world hunger problem, but what we can do to do, you know, make it better. So that's the idea. First and foremost is to understand the urban ecosystem, which has got the, you know, various factors where there is the urbanization is increasing, migration from the, you know, the rural areas to the urban areas in search of opportunities and better quality of living is increasing. And similarly, the increase in the accidents, road accidents, right? There was a study earlier that, okay, COVID has not killed as many as people who die on the road in India, right? So that is another increase in the thing, in the accidents and moving next is the environmental challenges. When we talk about mobility, we cannot, you know, do away in immediate future. We cannot do away with the fossil fuels. Hence, there are sustainability impacts, which we are, I am talking about present. Yeah, 10 years later, we'll sit and talk again. What happens? We'll see, time will tell. So similarly, the changing customer, right? So changing customer, when I say about like, okay, the type of the mo mo moment, how the mobility was 40 years ago is no longer, 20 years ago is no longer now. Earlier it used to be, it, it, it is, you know, changing with the generations. Earlier it was more of a public transport, dependency on the public transports because, okay, bus has not come today, I will not go today. That was the attitude, right? So it has changed slowly to, you know, uh, okay, if bus is not coming, what alternative can I find? Is it, uh, I am buying my own vehicle and I am commuting with my own vehicle. Now, aggregation of vehicle, right? The Uber, Solas or whomever have come in. Now the mindset is changed again 
and maybe due to pandemic again there is slight shift again right so otherwise there was a carpooling now you know pandemic has made it slightly dangerous also people cannot trust people <laughs> that's the issue in that case so uh, similarly the urban mobility landscape is changing constantly that is what is the point i want to uh, you know emphasize here and the technological evolution right so the 20 years ago when we sit and talk here there was no gpss and there was no tracking movement tracking or tagging the respective vehicles and all such kind of things yes mobility ecosystem is evolving a lot well what are the urban mobility challenges we talk about Enrique Penalosa very famous uh, statement right the developed country is not a place where poor have cars but the rich use the public transport that's what you, you know uh, yesterday i was talking to somebody you know who was saying that a person came from a singapore who's close friend and happened to be very rich but he came to delhi and he took a metro train and came to Connaught place right so that's the change in the mindset let's because in singapore you know you cannot any longer have your own cars they have made a rule that you have to deposit a lot to buy a car yes because they are addressing in that way though many of us may not agree to such kind of you know uh, rule sets yes that country is addressing that way but india can address in different way maybe there is a better way right create the awareness people use more and more public transport metro trains of course infrastructure has to develop well for that to make it lucrative for the people so similarly encouraging and creating awareness and rapid mobilization of emergency response facilities that's quite important because one of the cases i'm going to address in the upcoming slides is about how can the smart cities adopt better emergency response methodologies right we spoke in the earlier session today about uh, creating a green corridor for ambulance movement or you know uh, the fire engines movement and all those things right how do we do that and without ignoring sustainability factor and environmental friendliness now emphasis on the safety yes when there is mobility we mobile gets more and more faster there needs to be safety how do we address this is just a simple study on you know the indian mobility infrastructure across various different cities the simple study which says that death by age group right you see there the youth is more prone youth between the age of 18 to 45 who are really the human resources of the country right so but they are prone to such kind of uh, you know safety issues on the road that's the thing next causes of accidents you see there the biggest you know the share of the pie what incident takes let me read it out it is not visible to all of you fault of driver right so fault of driver is the one why because maybe the awareness maybe the sense of or sense of over urgency right so that could also be there or any such kind of uh, issues related to the impulses and emotions of the driver may lead to such kind of issues so insights little more insights and the key drivers requirement for the you know the road safety as well as mobility safety are most of the issues indicate the bigger the city bigger the problem right in the mobility how do we address all these things right so high speed you know there is a high need of urban mobility management right that is what the solutions like adaptive traffic management solutions in the smart cities are trying to address yes there is a long way to go maybe you know like the way honorable mp in the morning were saying that you know everybody says there is a smart city but uh, so far i have not seen you know anything but of course it takes time because there are two ways to it implementing the solution is not going to be only addressing everything making people aware of that and how to use that is also important at the same time and there is another analysis which is showing this part of the screen the right part of the screen about the 17 deaths like the way i 
you know indicated in the thing now the uh, the ICT intervention, information, communication, technology intervention in Indian smart cities, right? So one is, as I said, adaptive traffic control, the smart transport and virtual boundaries, right? So virtual boundaries is to carve out the respective geofencing for the respective uh, vehicular movements in the city. And adaptive traffic control is the one which typically earlier days Okay, when we go on a, any important roads in any major cities of India, right, all of us think that, okay, see, I stand here in this signal for about 100 seconds, I go to next signal, again I have to wait for another 100 seconds, right, or 60 seconds or whatever it is. Why can't these signals be synchronized, right? So this is the common thought every driver, everybody who drives their own vehicle thinks, right? Why can't this, because I have heard many people talk about it, yeah, to address that, there is this adaptive traffic management or adaptive traffic control, uh, you know, the solution has been there. The idea is not to increase the red time in every signal. Increase the green time that even impacts positively on the environment, positively on the traffic density and various such kind of aspects. Next is a GIS enablement in the urban administration, the geographical information system, ultimately the map based in the command control center in the smart city. Every smart city has got now, these 100 smart cities have got command and control centers sitting there on the GIS map, maybe in, a, in the 3D way next, that is upcoming, right? So the administrators watch and control the mobility in terms of tracking and uh, transportation systems or monitoring the signals or the management of the signals. Similarly, traffic enforcement, of course, the, I'm, you know, monetization by means of chalaning is one aspect, yes. At the same time, the, without the enforcement, just the monitoring, people are not going to follow, let us, you know, agree to it, right? Because we need some rules to be followed. Without that, you, it, it is, you know, everybody is not that mature to be on their own and then uh, you know, be, um, you know, following, abiding by the respective rule sets by their own. There should be rules and laws which will be, uh, which needs to be enforced. That is a red light violation, speed violation, and based on that, the fining system like e chalans and etc. Similarly, rapid emergency response and mobility, because the emergency response is quite important aspect for any smart city, so that citizens get the best benefit out of the in, in uh, the systems and the technologies implemented at the right time emergency response is nothing but if that has to happen at that time it has to happen otherwise there is no use of it right use case just to sum, sum it up all i'm going to show you one of the use cases uh, of the uh, smart city command and control center how it actually addresses i'm going to show you a video i'm going to play this at the same time i'm going to explain Okay, so as we move on the smart city, there are SOP engines because every infrastructure runs based on the standard operating procedures. So this is what you see is a SOP workflow on your screen out here. There are multiple stakeholding departments out here, right? So now, if this is a case of a fire emergency movement or any such kind of same thing applies to ambulance movement or something, how a green corridor could be created? Right? So I am adding here various different uh, uh, fleet which is available for the emergency movement and I am guiding a particular SOP sitting in the command and control center of a city, smart city. Right? So I, I let it go on its own because I wanted to have a slider and then show you. SOP is created and SOP is updated and it is deployed. Now, Similarly, there are how many departments when we are doing uh, emergency movement? Number one, there is a surveillance, that is a, a city law and order police. There is a city traffic police. There is a fire, uh, you know, department, fire response department. And then there are other monitors, uh, you know, public safety addressing systems or any public addressing systems or the billboards who will populate, you know, populate the messages. Now here, in this case, there is a fire outbreak. First and foremost, I, am I need to figure out where are my fire engine fleets, right? So first I am going to figure out where are fire engine. There is a fire engine which has to move to the location of incident which is in the center of the screen. 
now root optimization right the command control center platform helps you to do the root optimization so the root optimization the shortest route is found out and how many fire fleets are available right that also okay whichever is nearby the intelligence will push there and it will start mobilizing that now on the way are there any obstructions how to see that now let us see the cctvs in that area of that route right so like uh, in the initial presentation prashant spoke about cctv now we are building a chain the sequence out here to figure out you know how many cctvs are in that area on the left pan pen it is yes about to open and it will show you show the administrator okay the whether the road is clear or not clear right so the now okay one road is clear another road is clear and then similarly it will check for multiple cameras in that respective area and then the you know the sop is deployed then tracking of the sop happens there are multiple stakeholders in any city there are multiple stakeholders the biggest challenge in the urban operation or, or urban management is collaboration right each departments do not work with each other that is the biggest issue so now the standard operating system which is a collaborative standard operating system is going to solve that problem so the sop is deployed and every respective stakeholder is held responsible for their respective service level agreement response time right the mean time to respond which we call right which is being addressed and the sop is completely tracked now we'll see that okay who has done that who has who it has been assigned whether they have done the whether the movement and mobility has happened in time or not right so that's about this particular use case and the result of that tracking of that sop comes here in the particular box see here somebody has attended somebody has not attended right how many are critical how many have not been addressed all these as you know the details of the the result of the sop deployment standard operating system uh, procedure deployment will be available in the command and control center the respective officials will be held accountable and responsible for the same so that's about a simple use case which we have done in you know uh, one of the cities which i have showcased and uh, that's i think uh, that's about my time if you have any questions please feel free to ask we'll yes, take one question now and then, then we'll come back to it ma'am you had your hand up first hmm. somebody please mobilize the mic there <laughs> yeah. you just stand up and ask well the mic is coming Um, so it's uh, since the topic is very intriguing as you I think you have to hold the mic. Okay, <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. So it's related to the smart cities and intelligent mobility. Like uh, it's been bothering me a lot uh, since the morning that uh, the event has started. We are talking about smart city, safe city at the same time, right? Uh, so we see a lot of surveillance cameras on the roads, which tracks, which tells you that you have to maintain the speed, otherwise there will be a chalan. Otherwise there will be a chalan that you will receive. right but at the same time these applications are uh, this these devices are very helpful to control uh, accidents on the road but at the same time i see there are applications that an individual can install and see where these cameras are there and can control which misleads a driver uh, most of the times i've seen that because i've been traveling with few of my colleagues and i see it is it is misleading uh, the people uh, who are driving when you say that uh, most of the accidents uh, occur due to the fault of the driver right yes because we are misguiding misleading so, the driver with those applications definitely there are more chances of those accidents yeah, yeah, yeah. so you mean to say that are you scared of the cctv cameras being no. there as while driving no, or something of no. that sort so cctv no. camera is a great solution i yeah. must say but at the same time uh, uh, these applications that have come up in the market which enables a driver to see because everybody is in a hurry right to reach a particular destination so you, you so what application uh, are you saying navigation, navigation applications, applications to be there exactly. we'll we'll address your question in the panel when we finish this yes. if you don't sure, mind I because it's a be whole bunch yes. I, i think our next speaker is webhav uh, from yes. CM, cms so um, so
So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's an honor to speak in front of you all. So I'll quickly touch upon uh, uh, the history of CMS. So CMS is a four decade old organization, primarily into business, which is uh, uh, into traffic management, e-governance services, energy management. Okay. So by virtue of the business that we are into, we are touching uh, uh, the citizen's life. And that's the reason our motto uh, has been uh, simplifying lives. Okay. Uh, CMS, the name is synonymous to traffic management. We, we were the ones who uh, were the early implementers of intelligent traffic management solutions in India. So uh, our journey in traffic uh, started way uh, back in the year, early 90s, I would say, when we started uh, delivering traffic management solutions for the city of Mumbai. From there on, uh, we have been involved in all the marquee projects that have been uh, done till date in India on traffic management. So, so we were the ones who had first deployed the adaptive traffic control system in Delhi, uh, along with uh, a partner from UK, Peak uh, Traffic. Okay, that was uh, the, there was about hundred odd intersections in the same vicinity that we are right now present in. Uh, that was followed by uh, our next successful implementation that was for Mumbai, uh, which is up and running till date. So uh, in the early 2008, we started off a project uh, for deployment of adaptive traffic control systems for the city of Mumbai. We have uh, uh, upgraded about 250 odd intersections in Mumbai to adaptive traffic control system, which enable uh, say real time monitoring of the traffic situation and accordingly adjusting the green times and uh, saving or rather bringing down the delays uh, that the motorist face. Uh, so, so these are a few of our marquee projects. So uh, in the year 2015, when uh, the India uh, started its journey on the smart city uh, cities. We we were the ones who uh, that time had all the experience required. Like we we in isolation had been delivering such solutions for the uh, for the nation already. So all our traffic projects, all our energy management projects, uh, the safe city projects, or the critical infrastructure surveillance project that we had been delivering uh, till date uh, were kind of. Uh, say complementing the uh, the missions motto, the smart city missions motto. So we saw a lot of synergy uh, in the business that we were doing and uh, the, the vision that the government had. So we embarked on this journey uh, from 2015. Uh, so for us, luckily, uh, the PM's constituency of Vadodara was the first project that we have delivered, uh, delivered under smart city. And it was uh, inaugurated by the PM and uh, till date we are uh, running uh, the city on our solutions uh, in Vadodara. So, <clears throat> uh, just to take you through the experience that we have on uh, smart cities, Vadodara, as I mentioned, Vizag, we are delivering our traffic management solution for the Vizag smart city. Kalan Dumbuli, uh, along with traffic, we are also deploying the enforcement solution for Kalan Dumbuli, uh, along with our partners. <coughs> uh, then uh, for Rajcom, we are doing surveillance uh, in 10 districts. Nasik Smart City, again, our traffic management solutions have been delivered for Nasik. Uh, uh, there's a very interesting project that we are involved in uh, for the state of Kerala. We are delivering a, a early warning detection and dissemination system for the state of Kerala. So it's a project uh, which uh, uh, is covering the entire state of Kerala, wherein we are setting up, uh, uh, say, SCOCs and uh, district level control centers, which uh, will be disseminating information on calamities or disasters uh, uh, which may uh, hit the state. Okay, so uh, it's <clears throat> right now under deployment, and uh, fortunately for us, uh, this since uh, past few days, Kerala had some uh, uh, heavy rains uh, occurring. So the CM himself has been using our facility that has been deployed in the uh, the state to monitor the situation in the entire state. MCJ Mumbai, I spoke to you about, we have been running uh, the Mumbai traffic for past three decades, I would say. Uh, Chennai, we are involved in the traffic management uh, again for uh, the state of Chennai, along with uh, the e-governance services that we deliver for the state. Uh, the most recent uh, Active, uh, wins that we have uh, in the space of smart cities uh, is for the state of Bihar when we are delivering uh, two smart cities. One is Bagalpur and Muzaffarpur. 
here again uh, we are delivering our traffic management solutions along with the ICCC platform. So uh, the way things have evolved in the recent past, so we, we see that there has been a physical infrastructure, the physical layer that is uh, uh, the standalone solutions that we have uh, helping the city or administrators to run the city. Like we have the traffic management uh, solution, we have the surveillance systems, we have the multimodal uh, transport systems. So uh, these systems uh, need to be integrated into a digital layer so that the city administrators have a better uh, visibility of uh, the overall city needs or uh, the, the, the system alerts that they have, okay. So here we feel uh, our expertise helps uh, the city administration in setting up uh, the required infrastructure as well as the backend applications to help them better manage the city. So I'll quickly uh, take you to the ICCC part. So we have seen that, uh, I mean, uh, since the smart city implementation has begun, ICCC has been the core uh, solution that has, uh, that is required for a city. And uh, I, I would say that we have uh, made a fairly good progress in the past couple of years, wherein, uh, uh, say, more than 80 cities now have uh, the integrated command and control center, uh, center set up and uh, running for the cities. Okay, so uh, it, command and control center basically is a nerve center of the city. Uh, why we say that is because uh, the city or administrators are able to uh, visualize or have real-time information as to what all uh, incidents are happening in the city. Uh, they can monitor the KPIs of uh, uh, the, uh, the KPIs that they have uh, defined, I mean the performance against each of those parameters. Uh, it provides situational awareness to the city administrators and there can be a standardized uh, response that can be defined as Chinmay uh, demonstrated in the use case that he had uh, seen. So there can be standard operating processes which can be defined beforehand wherein if there is an event uh, or an incident that happens it can trigger off and the city operator or the city uh, emergency responders are quickly put into the job, okay, or they can be uh, on the field trying to mitigate the issues or mitigate the problems that the city is facing. So uh, by this, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's automating the city uh, processes, which itself is going to improve the, uh, the life of the citizens <coughs> in a way. So uh, collaboration, uh, again, I'll refer to Chenmai's discussion wherein we saw that uh, with uh, the incident, there were multiple agencies which were quickly alerted and uh, the resources from each of those uh, agencies were deployed to, uh, uh, say, attend to the accident or the emergency situation that was. So ICCC is a uh, best tool that uh, allows the city uh, administrators to achieve that. So just an overview, uh, it's a platform which is agnostic to any kind of, uh, uh, say, makes and models. It, it can take feeds from any and every uh, intelligent device that's uh, available on field, okay? Uh, so the integration basically is through REST APIs uh, or uh, through direct socket uh, communications. The ICCC platform can collate uh, real-time informations and say, uh, present a, a meaningful insight to the city administrators to act upon uh, uh, the need of the city. So what are the key components of an IEEE application or what it delivers? So for uh, at the command and control center, you have the real-time dashboards uh, which enable uh, the city administrator to visualize as to uh, how different functions of the cities are uh, happening. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> there can be AI-based tools which uh, uh, are able to provide them predictive insights on to, uh, to better manage the city. For the field operators, uh, it's a bi-directional communication. They can have the alerts coming in from the command and control center which can direct them to uh, a particular incident uh, wherein they can uh, be the early responders in helping uh, solve the problem for the city. Likewise, they can themselves uh, identify a problem and uh, using uh, the, the intelligent devices like, uh, say, mobile apps or uh, tabs, they can feed it, uh, the information back to the control center. Uh, in case of emergencies, it, it 
can also uh, possibly help the city administrator understand as to what's the magnitude or, uh, of the incident or the emergency that they are trying to tackle. Uh, for the citizens, it's uh, again a, a platform wherein uh, they can have engagement with the city administrators or the city managers. Okay, so they can have their grievances registered onto the platform. There can be uh, the platform can also have a sentiment analysis done uh, on the the social media posts that the citizens done. So there is a lot of capability that this particular uh, IEEE platform has. Uh, so this is just the in integration architecture. So uh, uh, this IEEE platform can consume data from various data points. It can be uh, the on-field devices that we have. It can be uh, some, <coughs> say, say possibly the SCADA network that uh, uh, electricity uh, discom is running. There can be a multimodal uh, transport system uh, which feeds into the data into the IEEE. So uh, this data can be collated, correlated, and accordingly action uh, items can be defined or SOPs can be defined. So these are a few of the dashboards uh, of IEEE. So this particularly are from our implementation in Vadodara. So uh, I'll just uh, talk about the thoughts that we have, what next needs to be done. The city has already invested into uh, the required hardware and the application software. So uh, what next that we need to do on in this space? So what we believe is like uh, more integrations are required. More uh, data needs to flow into the IEEC platform so that we can have uh, a more synergized approach uh, into managing the city. Like uh, I'll, I'll just quote an instance like uh, say if most of the cities have the IEEC platform wherein uh, the elements that the city has deployed under the smart city project are say uh, integrated to the application but uh, say uh, there are floating car data that is available through say uh, uber or ola there is a, a metro network that the city has or a train network that that city has that data is still not fed in most of the places so uh, if uh, in, there is an event like say possibly uh, there is a train network which is down or uh, and because of which the authorities are required to deploy more number of say uh, public transport buses or even the Ola Uber network will have that point in time uh, a lot of uh, demand that is generated. Okay, so this insight basically I, I think still are missing with the city administrators because uh, that type of integration hasn't happened or uh, people need to start thinking in that direction and have this data also collected and uh, say uh, analyzed in the control center. Uh, so we, we suggest that uh, we should also uh, have a ag data aggregation layer which helps us build a predictive and cognitive uh, uh, model to uh, manage different situations. Uh, we, we talk about uh, say uh, leveraging the cloud capabilities. So it need not be a, a, a on-prem uh, infrastructure heavy uh, a platform. Okay, it can be a model wherein we have a hybrid uh, uh, on-prem plus a cloud uh, uh, infra available, which can be used for uh, by the city. So uh, these are the few thoughts that uh, we have. Um, uh, with this, I'll end my presentation. If there are any questions uh, that you have, I'll be open. To we'll that. take the questions at the end. Uh, Fine. No worries. Thank you. Our uh, next speaker is uh, Mr. Sailesh Purohit. Uh, he's from Delta Electronics and um, they have got a wonderful set of devices for customer. We also understand that. So we had two things in mind. If we just for a for few minutes, if we understand this like a classroom. So we had learned resolution and now we are talking about the size. If we combine both these, uh, we actually talk about uh, how do we, how to help our customer, I mean. So we uh, could understand that the customer wants to see more of everything in limited space and then uh, more of everything is more resolution on the screen. So Delta very innovatively and very proudly I can say that Delta innovated this product some years back and it was, in, it was launched and installed in any uh, global sites. At the same time, it was proposed and installed also in India. We have already smart cities who are using a 4K DLP video walls.
with the highest possible resolution available on globe through video walls at 24 by 7 solution i mean so what actually how does it actually helps that are so far the full hd resolution which is a which is close to a 2 megapixel because we all understand megapixels well we all uh, wants to have highest megapixel cameras in our phones so uh, this terminology we understand easier full hd is the most popular one uh, i would say at least two the two years back till the time 4k was launched and now uh, in control room display just to have four times visually big canvas or on the same physical size to observe four times resolution this is the uh, i would say upcoming and already set trend with lot of use cases also in india another way how it helps the customer is we already know at least uh, if 60 cities are implemented out of 100 and we understand that by 15th of august possibly 100 cities would be virtually inaugurated by honorable prime minister so once we we see 100 cities are implemented and at least 20 cities sumit ji uh, i would you would agree i hope you would agree 20 or more cities have come up with an expansion scope by now already like prayagraj like gurgaon and yeah, at least 20 so but these 20 cities who are expanding to second fold are having a biggest constraint of expanding the command and control space because again the space constraint comes into picture so then we we have a solution for them which is more futuristic where they can go for a high resolution display and they are they need not to worry about the limited spaces available some quick success stories we have done we started with uh, surat smart city as first smart city which is expanding the capacity to i would say n number of times surat smart city had installed a video wall being a video wall oem i can at least replicate in that way only For 16 screens were installed in 2015 that was the first smart city now they have come up with an opportunity for they have procured already 110 screens uh, all together that is going to be the biggest installation in india in smart cities through delta this is jhansi smart city pcmc aurangabad kochi ndmc bhuvneshwar raipur indore aligarh uh, using these pictures just to show up that uh how we have helped our customers and when we say displays displays video walls how does actually it looks like this is agra i think sumit sir would would want me to keep a pause at agra for for some more seconds <laughs> naya raipur smart cities this is bhopal this is surat i was talking about at the first smart city implemented in 2015 uh other than control room displays how we uh, help as an extended display arm to the smart cities and beyond is following we uh, are the biggest oem again as i had shown in the earlier slides for the outdoor uh, displays like similar to these uh, which are replacing day by day the flex boards from the cities this is another way you see actually a city like a smart city at least you showcase that and cities like jhansi agra and those prayagraj i would say which are oh, which are considered to be old heritage cities but we have a lot of foreign footfall also we also so being indians also we go to the city we see lot of enlightenment through this we see we really feel proud and that's how our foreign uh, travelers must be understanding the city that india is badalta hua bharat this is a proud installation inaugurated by prime minister modi ji uh, on 15th of july this shows the live ganga aarti so objective is not to show up displays objective is to just to all of us should make uh, feel proud i mean that yes we are actually going smart so if i go to varanasi station i may not be having enough bandwidth to go and attend the famous ganga aarti but i can have a darshan through the display itself that was the idea uh, while implementing it through the smart city 
This is Ahmedabad, around 160 screens. Sushma Swaraj Bhavan. You, if you go to Bangalore airport, you will see that. Chinmay, next time you are going back, you can see this screen again. So when we say we are display OEMs, we are also uh, solution provider for network controllers. So this, this installation is 339 screens across uh, Rajasthan state where we control it from a single command and control room in Jaipur. This is Vigyan Bhavan. This is what my time was. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Selish. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Saurav Agarwal uh, for the next session. He is with TechBridge. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone and uh, I would like to uh, take some time, uh, first of all thanks to the, okay, uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, for their uh, beautiful presentations and uh, we'll continue this uh, discussion here. Uh, here we are, uh, since, the, since morning we have been having the discussion around smart cities and data and other things. And uh, we started the discussion uh, on some note of, uh, you know, data, how the silos are happening. Uh, we want to uh, take this opportunity uh, to present uh, our thought idea. Uh, may not be it is driven by products, but the whole thought about how the smart city should be working and what should be done in India. Uh, with the same breath, I would like to speak that, yes, I am presenting or representing uh, TechBridge, uh, a company which is uh, based in India, make in India and uh, everything from heart and soul, it is Indian. Okay, uh, this is uh, about a couple of, okay, uh, some uh, accreditations that we have, uh, just to, you know, quantify the capabilities that we carry. Uh, I would, uh, okay, main thing is that, uh, yeah, uh, we have a couple of, uh, the whole thought about our uh, thing is that we are uh, developing uh, softwares which are required uh, in uh, uh, data centers or command control centers or smart cities because ultimately we are now talking about the data world. And uh, for data to be visualized, we need certain tools and components which are being developed by our company. Okay, the whole uh, thought that we carry today is about, uh, see, uh, we have been seeing that in silos there are lots of uh, data being collected. But uh, is the data working in sync? Are we able to take meaningful decision based on the data that is coming up? And as we are getting, getting into more bigger data lakes and more information around us, and more secu the security is a bigger concern, then as we believe and we understand that integration of NOC and the SOC ecosystems is critical to the gr growth and to take meaningful decisions on the information that we have. Now, there has been a debate going on across the globe also, not only in, in India, that should this be done or not? We have seen, we have been talking to CIOs or CSOs, and they all have multiple different departments, but they don't converge to a single ecosystem. What we are trying to advocate here or present here is that it should be a merged ecosystem. Why? We always try to see that how, because I personally myself come from IP world or you know, the world where things are converged, we are talking about convergence, data convergence, information convergence. In that ecosystem of information, we always take that, uh, you know, stand that we should have single set of information as a bird's eye view for the whole management or people to take decisive steps. From that perspective, if we imagine a world where, where some incident is happening, now some, suppose some server is down, uh, if a NOC person is looking at that server, he will say, he or she will simply take it up as an event where some machine has gone down. But they will never realize that some security incident has happened. So what we are trying to advocate here is that in terms of security, we should always look from the perspective that if some event is happening, why not we keep an eye from the perspective that, that some malware would have come or some attack has happened, some cyber attack is happening. We don't, we should not look at the things that some 
uh, that it is a silo event, teams will not work, they will not talk together, they will not see two things at from the world's eye view, from the whole organization perspective, or even from the security perspective. Maybe the incident looks uh, pretty simple or uh, maybe some uh, networking issue or something like that. Why do we want to look at it like this? At the same time, we also want to uh, advocate a point that efficiency. If we have a converged NOG and SOC, if we have a merged NOG and SOC, if we have combined ecosystem, then how much efficiency we can introduce in the whole ecosystem? We want to advocate that. See, the point is that uh, are we getting any benefits or not? We have seen this challenge that across the organization, in the organization, people don't talk to each other in, in terms of departments. They don't talk to each other. How much of efficiency is lost in this process? We are trying to position and we want to work with the ecosystem partners like even CMS or uh, uh, Chinmay we were talked. We also want to advocate that we are talking about IEEC's command control centers. We are having single eye uh, or single view for the whole thing, uh, you know, whole ecosystem, data lakes, informations. So why not we merge the securities and the, the SOC and NOC part? And we look at from the efficiency point of view, ecosystem, synchronization point of view, how much savings can be done, can be introduced in the whole system. We want to give this paradigm in Indian market in terms of our uh, esteemed customers or even the people, users uh, at the city level or government level or even data centers or even big enterprises. We want to take this proposition forward and to move to each other. Uh, let's, let's come up together and see that what our challenges and we overcome together. As an organization, we are here to support with the system. But yes, we should look at these efficiencies because as a whole, we will introduce a lots of savings around this it will actually convert into money and as we are talking about rois or things like that we will certainly get some view uh, some value out of this thing which we are trying to propose okay now uh, a couple of uh, points which we want to uh, you know take it further on like okay fine we we are talking about it but how do we really approach this what is the steps that we propose here so in our view that uh, see for anything Planning is fine, but execution is the more critical part. And then comes the sustainability of the solution or sustainability of the thought, sustainability of the system. How do we do that? We cannot create something and then we forget it. No, it doesn't happen like that. So first important thing is tool. What are the tools which are going to deliver this whole thought process? So that identification of such tools, the uh, components in the ecosystem is very, very important. Then. Next thing is, what is the right balance? How do we strike that balance that how we can make sure that the NOC and SOC are working together and are actually giving results that we desire? So we need to see that because when we talk about NOC ecosystem or the NOC platforms in the organizations, it is purely being looked at the perspective of IT infrastructure management. No one looks at it that someone, we can manage threats from this. We can secure our ecosystems through this. No one, the IT teams doesn't look like, at that. Wherein SOC team is just doing the 360, uh, 180 degree opposite view of the whole thing. Now, uh, with my second point, that is right, balance should be stricken. So we should look at that, how we can balance the view of IT and security teams in this whole setup. Then the right size team, because uh, we all understand we come from the business world and the teams, the criticality of the team members, teams is very, very equal and right pillar in the whole setup that we are trying to plan. So these are the three points which we want to share uh, regarding how do we approach the knock and SOG integration. Now, what are the, uh, the next point is that uh, once we have identified that, okay, these are the building blocks in the whole system in our thought, then we want to see that how these whole uh, two aspects of an organization, how do they actually overlap? See, it's very clear that the tool sets, uh, we have seen, we have met many people, we have worked along, we are delivering and we are doing a lot of things around these. We have seen that there is a common tool set which is being, you know, uh, procured in silos. They are not talking to each other, same tool set being deployed in two ecosystems, but they are not talking to each other. So we observe that there is a big overlap which can be managed, handled, and it can, uh, because for example, I'll tell you, uh, some incident happens in the uh, NOC IT infrastructure, and 
immediately if that incident is reported to the SOC team through a mechanism of filtering and identification AI, then we can maybe raise an alarm to the SOC team that such incident has happened, a machine is down and probably the machine is not down because of some power failure, but it is a uh, planned attack. So such uh, incident reporting, such uh, uh, events in the EMS infrastructure or environment has to be identified. Maybe there is some uh, SLAs are being breached and it is again a uh, security incident which is uh, driving this whole thing. Why don't we, in today's environment, in the today's world where we are living, we see that it's more of a cyber war, it's more of a cyber attacks, wherein the whole IT infrastructure is being managed by separate teams. They don't understand the granularity or the deep issues which run around these security threats. So our whole, th whole thought is that why not we think and we work in the direction where we merge these two ideas and we bring up a platform or the ecosystem which can efficiently introduce, uh, you know, the solution or efficiently manage the whole thing. We may not be having uh, such threats, uh, you know, quantification of such threats today, but if we will go deep dive into these data points, then we will certainly come across such points where we will identify that yes, such threats are uh, pertinent, they are going to, they are happening and they are going to increase slowly. If we are better prepared today with this whole thought process, then I am sure after a few years down the line, we will have a, a better view and control over the situations. That is what we want to say. See, uh, so uh, as I, uh, as it is mentioned here, uh, uh, like process, uh, process the alerts from the log sources. We, uh, we, uh, I would like to share one more uh, thought like, uh, we have certain products, okay. Uh, I don't want to, I'm not, the whole idea of mine is not to pitch the products right now. But the point is that uh, we have seen such logging systems. We have uh, worked on uh, such security threat analysis where uh, the, uh, normally what happens is that the EMS infrastructure has logging systems and people having the security infrastructure. So we are trying to converge the thought process of how such logging systems can be used, utilized to identify threats which are being, uh, you know, uh, uh, seen by the uh, whole, uh, our IT infrastructure. And now with the smart cities and mobilities we are talking about, data is there so much. So uh, management of IT and security, data security or even the system securities is very equally important, not less than each other. So uh, we are trying to uh, advocate this idea of that how, uh, like, uh, as I have mentioned, second point, utilize a ticketing system for intra and inter and intra team collaborations. So uh, it may look very, very trivial, okay, ticketing system, held system, but we have, uh, we are working on certain things uh, with some customers and uh, we have uh, come up with a solution where we can do a very, very more, uh, you know, uh, a very, very high degree of intelligent ecosystem where uh, this ticketing system can be used for a very uh, efficient way of managing the IT as well as, uh, you know, uh, security systems. So, uh, as next point is about the set and enforce policies and knock and soak areas. So, uh, if we will go into operational uh, details, SOP based infrastructure, then we will, uh, SOP based uh, things, then we will see that how uh, there are very, very ground level policies which need to be shared across we, uh, I, have, I, have, I have met many operations engineers and we have worked upon these things and we have observed that when NOC teams are working, they have very, very, you know, uh, narrowed view of IT infrastructure. They don't look at, uh, means they just look at, okay, infra is up or down, things are working or not working. They don't, uh, and wherein if you go to the SOC, I, uh, SOC people, they will look at that, okay, something is happening, who is trying to do? So they will have complete policing mindset. Now, we need to see that how we can converge these two mindsets. They are 180 degree opposite, but there has to be a middle way between them. So, the set of policies wherein we don't uh, create false alarms also. At the same time, we don't ignore the right alarms also. So, something of that nature has to be identified and worked along. It is very, very specific to the scenarios and things, but yes, there has to be a, a way to handle this. Now. And the next point which we have shared here is the security events can result in network performance issues. So as I am uh, taking this idea forward that we cannot ignore the incidents and scenarios happening in, in the network and we cannot just brush them aside and think that okay security has nothing to do with them. 
we believe that in today's world where it is all IoT or IP based infrastructures, where are all you know, about connected things, cameras. Our next point is that uh, security events causes availability issues. So uh, I am sure many people are, are aware that some incident happened in Mumbai a couple of months ago and uh, it was reported as a security incident wherein uh, on the practicality side it was shown as an uh, IT infrastructure issue. So our power grids are connected. So we cannot, uh, again as I am saying, uh, we should see the IT infra events as actually the security events also. Yeah, we need to draw the line. We need to see that uh, what is right and wrong. We should, as I said, we should not uh, unnecessarily make thing, everything trivial or overload the whole system. So we need to be intelligent there, but yes, we need to work on this. Sorry, uh, I think we need to. We need to, uh, sure. So I'll just quickly, uh, uh, so anyways, uh, this is uh, like uh, a, uh, a quantification of uh, our thought uh, in terms of efficiencies and how do we get them. Uh, a two, uh, only uh, I'll just browse these three slides uh, on the, uh, like, Okay, we have uh, TechBridge as a company, we have uh, knock and sock products, uh, so I want to just, uh, you know, um, kind of position the idea that yes, as a company we have the capability uh, to position the integrated solution uh, of knock and sock and that's from where we are coming up. I think uh, I am done for this. Thank you so much, Saurabh. I Welcome. think it was uh, a good point, a different point. Uh, th that brings us to our security specialist, Brijesh. And uh, Brijesh is uh, with uh, Force Point and will probably elaborate on uh, more things in to do with security. And you are so, in between lunch. So. Yeah, yeah. So it's a difficult uh, session because I am in between them and the lunch. Okay, so I'll try to uh, just make sure that I'll be finishing in 15 minutes. So uh, we all discussed, uh, I think, from the last one hour uh, on the products, on the surveillance cameras, on the data that getting ingested in the control center. Okay, so let me touch one important aspect of how we can go and secure these smart cities. Okay, and uh, I'm purely focusing on uh, discussing with multiple uh, smart cities, government of India, defense, and to some part of the enterprise as well, how we can build a zero trust approach because that is the approach, that is the security model, uh, which needs to be a part of every design because security needs to go as a part of a design. So Force Point as a company, uh, it's, a, it's a company which has more than two decades of experience in securing multiple government institutions, smart cities, uh, defense segments and that to an enterprise. So what I'll be touching on is how the evolution of smart cities has happened. And I remember four years back I was on the same stage uh, talking about how we can go and build a security within a smart city, okay, and but thing has evolved over the period of time. And if you see a typical control center, right, there are multiple data which is coming from the IT systems and the OT systems. Uh, so the data which is coming from either a smart parking, traffic management, uh, it goes to a, some kind of a network layer, uh, both on wired and wireless, and then goes in into some data lakes. Now those data lakes are either on-premise or uh, in smart cities. Now we are using a private clouds to uh, do a faster processing and then the application layer comes and then your security sits on top of it. Now that is happening till this time, but everything evolved over the period of time and we have seen and that's what our thought is, that if the mobility is increasing, if the IoT is coming into picture, 5G is coming into picture, how should security goes along with it? And that's my discussion point uh, today. So the new cyber security challenges, if I'll go and touch upon, and I have typically categorized into uh, what needs to be focused on the IT side of it and what needs to be focused from a OT side of it. If I'll go and touch on the IT side of it, we all know that mobility has increased. We'll just start using smart gadgets. It's getting used in the navigation systems. And then there is a 5G which is also coming and increasing the speed piece of it. The cloud has been adopted, okay, and definitely we all see that the cloud speed and agility and the resilience will be used in smart cities as well, okay, and the data will definitely ingest more and more data will come. And then the emerging threats, right, which is very national states focused, purely focusing on 
launching some cyber attacks which is on a very higher scale and impacting not only the IT setups but to an individual people, right? Because we are processing data which is related to an individual people now. Now let's go to the OT security piece of it and there were certain things which has evolved like industry 4.0 comes which typically getting used by public sector but a piece of it uh, based on the design that we have for smart cities also getting adopted in smart cities because the smart sen sensors, IOTs and all. And one piece of the smart cities which I think one of the friend mentioned on the SCADA systems, right? A SCADA system which is purely OT focus. How we can make sure that the security should also be designed when we are implementing those SCADA systems? How we make sure the knock and sock systems which we just discussed how those data can be ingested back to the NOC and SOC systems and bring a unification view rather than currently we are taking it as a separate, separate entity, right? IT needs to be managed separately, OT needs to be managed separately. And let's see how a zero trust can help in these critical security systems. And there are certain initiatives which has done by the government and certain global standards. So the global standards which talks about a zero trust purely focused on certain pillars, right? So when you go and implement something in a zero trust, you have to adopt those pillars. You have to adopt the identity, you have to adopt the networks, you have to adopt the users, devices, and then go and build your zero trust architecture. Then NIST also three years back, uh, totally talk about what the zero architecture should looks like, right? It should be adaptive in nature. Like adaptive is the one thing which we are now adding to each and every technology. Like one of the uh, Chin may mention that adaptive needs to be there on a traffic man management system, right? So adaptive means when you understand different contextual parameters and based on that you take a decision, whether it's based on the risk, whether it's based on the trust, and there are certain global standards which typically focusing on these zero trust model. And this is not only limited to just IT, OT security. It can be implemented in your everyday life as well when you talk about a zero trust. Then CERT, I think, on 28th of April has also released certain guidelines. And this is a common guidelines which typically use for your government entities, enterprise entities and all, which purely focus on that how certain information security principles needs to be adopted as a part of an extension of an IT Act. Okay. And as I mentioned, the pillars so zero trust maturity model has also been introduced. Okay. And this is also a global standard which says the different entities and if we see those entities within the smart cities, we are working with our entities, okay? We are working with device, we are with working with multiple networks, those are highly integrated or disjointed networks. We are working with the application and workloads, okay? And we are working with the critical aspect which is data. So these five pillars of the zero trust needs to be incorporated when we are designing the security for the smart cities as well. Okay. So fourth point is helping in achieving multiple smart cities in going to this path of a zero trust security model with the different technologies related to it. I'll be not going deeper into a technology. We have a booth here outside. You can go and meet our complete team and they can give you a walkthrough on each and every technologies one by one starting from all the five pillars. But what I am focusing on here is how you can go and implement it and I have taken a one small use case how this can be implemented in a critical infrastructure and this critical infrastructure which I have mentioned is, is a smart city. And I have taken a reference of a Purdue model. Uh, this model typically keeps track of how you can go and build a security into a network segmentation or a micro segmentation approach how you can go and build each and layer. So there is a level zero, level one, there is a supervisory level, there is a control level, there is an enterprise level, how you can go and build a security on each and every level. And that's what we are talking about. We are talking about terms like network segmentation, micro segmentations, right? These all goes on to the principle of zero trust. So how we are doing on this typically is, when there is a critical infrastructure, okay, and there is a segregation which is required on the network side of it, 
there is a segregation which is required in ITOT, boundary protections, there is a DMZ which needs to be exposed for the visibility of different zones, there is a remote access which is required for secure vendors. All this can be enabled with the next generation firewall and IPS capabilities. Okay, so that goes into one layer of it. Then there is a high assurance, there is a transmission of data which happens between your IT components, OT components, cross domain components, and these are typically air gap. Okay? And these are not only network transformations, there is a content, there is a data which transfer across to it. So take an example when a video get captured from the camera and feed back to the control center, there is a path it has to traverse. Okay? There is a data integrity which needs to be maintained. Okay, so all those high assurance data communications are protected with a data guard which is our cross domain system which captures it on a deep packet level. Understand what data which is traversing between those typical components. Then the users who are typically you are managing the control centers, they are working on that data. They are typically capturing certain reports, they are doing a detailed monitoring. You can also understand can I capture their insider threat? Can I understand that their machines should not be compromised? Okay, because we have seen that the cyber attacks is not only happen from outside to inside. There is always something weak element inside which typically reach to a breach or a kind of an attack, which can be a malicious, which may be a compromised user. And then there should be a technologies which should be next generations. We can't only limit it to the technologies which is only database based like viruses or a sandbox based which started five, six years back, which is a zero day. So there are technologies which purely talks about a zero trust content delivery. How we can go and deliver a zero trust content and that's where the CDR technologies come into pictures because these are not only protecting us from an office documents, but also kind of a steganography attacks. Now, steganography attacks is where the data and the threat is going within some videos, some images. Okay? So, these technologies help in removing those threats between those data points as well. Now, I have taken one example of a video surveillance compiler because I have seen that it's a hot topic from the morning. Okay? So, I thought let me put my security back to it. So, the thought is how we can go and protect a deep inspection between your messages and your camera. So camera is designed on particular positioning and sometime someone has changed a position or someone have moved the camera, right? And I think one of the friend was saying that if there's some physical tampering which is happening. So there are messages which go and communicate between the camera and the systems, okay? So what we make sure is that we are getting in between. So we have a technology called Gata Guard which sits in between and makes sure that these client and the cameras can communicate without any tampering. Okay? And there is a technology behind it, how we do it. So we deploy a data guard, we have a video adapter, there are different plugins which is available. That's not only limited to surveillance but other factors as well. We do a data validations, we do checks those file filters, we do monitors those protocols messages and this all, all happened in a real time. And in a, in a real time, we are not only forwarding those messages, we are also inspecting that messages for any tampering, which is happening. Okay, and this is not only limited to just the cameras, definitely you go and get some validation of your metadata, profiles, PTZ for the cameras and all those SOPs which you have defined for that. And typically, just for one of the example, we are doing this for one and video audio stream for one GB per second of data traffic. Okay, and so this is the data guard. So data guard is not only limited to just video surveillance. It goes beyond that, okay? Our customers in India, whether they are coming from smart cities, defense, or any air gap systems, or any air gap systems, they definitely taking and using this data guards for their structured data, unstructured data. We are using this an airspace management system and just making sure that your disjointed networks needs to be secured at each and every layer. So I was talking about the threat and we discussed that there was antivirus, sandbox and all. But the CDR, what it typically is do it, it extract your information, recreate your information into a new document. So you are not focusing on what is left behind within the document based on the malware. Now threat is a one piece of it, that's a one context. 
but threat will not go and cover each and every part of a security. The data intelligence, and we are a zero trust data protection company, where data which is lying anywhere, whether it's lying within your system, whether it's lying within your workloads, whether now it's going to the cloud, whether it's going over the internet, over in the email, we are protecting that data exfiltration anywhere, anytime. And when I was mentioning from an insider threat perspective, right, you need to capture what your users are doing. And this tool is getting used by multiple data centers in smart cities as well to purely focusing on what the people are doing, what the typical field officers are doing. Last but not the least, the focus was also how you can go and protect the security with the different network segments, right? So you can do a segmentations, you can do a secure remote access to your vendors, all that you do with the SD-WAN and firewall IPS capabilities. Now, one thing which is also very hot, uh, and everyone comes and discuss this when I was discussing with the government sector, can I go and adopt zero trust in certain way? Okay, zero trust is not a product. It's a security model. And the one thing which is typically coming is how I can go and access my network with the zero trust network access. Till this time, everything was on a VPN. Okay, now smart cities have also given the roaming users that install a VPN, connect to the applications which is there in the centerpiece. But they always need to be a part of a network. The ZTNA provide a capability that they need not to be a part of a network. They will only get an access to an application with the ZTNA capability and that's why the movement is happening from a VPN based access which is a network based access to an application based access which is a ZTNA. Okay, you can get a more detail once you go and visit our booth. So in a nutshell what we typically doing is this is the security maturity model. Okay, so CISA has implemented and focused on this guideline of security mature model and that's what we are delivering back to our customers, whether they are from smart cities, government or any other entities, focusing on these five pillars. Just remember how you can go and secure your identity, your devices, your application and workloads, your data, and last but not least, your network. And then building a behavioral analytics, which is a central piece, which is a governance model, and delivering this. So how we are delivering this, this is one of my last slide. How we are delivering this is by different technologies. Okay, so that's what I mentioned, different technologies which start from your network, your data, your behaviors, your insiders, your content, all needs to be secured with these different of technologies which are combination of IT and IoT. Now let's understand, let's see what you have learned. So please do visit our booth after your lunch. We are not inviting you before the lunch. So after your lunch, and let's learn and win. Okay, so with that, I'll take over. Thank you. Appreciate the time. I will open it up for a couple of questions uh, from the audience. We have a question pending to answer, ma'ams, um, which is people are using apps to bypass the camera systems. That was your question, not on the navigation system, right? But did you know that uh, there are dummy cameras throughout the city, which are not cameras really, yes. which is telling you by the app. So there is a whole concept and somebody got a Nobel Prize for it called nudge economics, which is saying that they will nudge you to do the right thing. So if the app is telling you to slow down, it is good for everybody, <laughs> whether there is a camera or not, whether you get a fine or not. So let us understand that there is a lot of things that we need to do as a city I and mean, I, I work with Delhi police so I can tell you with confidence there's a lot of things that they will have to do to get you to behave not you ma'am everybody um, but um, and and not all of it needs to be fined fine is not the only way to uh, get people to be aware of everything but the urban administrators to know that right where where you are you may not be knowing and what you what you have to do in such emergency situation as a citizen you may not be knowing but urban administrators are trained for years together for such kind of a things that if a citizen is stranded if our defense force forces can do that right if somebody is stuck in the flood navy can land there or the you know coast guards can land there and pick them out right rescue them right if that can be done by the defense forces or armed forces then why can't other urban administration departments can do? That is the idea, right? So the thing is to guide them, this platform is, platform's job is mainly 
to guide the urban administrators to rescue the citizens from such kind of situations of course eventually citizens will also be aware of these kind of a things right hope i am addressing referring your question. to you know the ntrf teams yes, who were coming and they were very smart at their work actually by the way they were very very smart at their work but you know the basic thing was they were calling hanji i am sitting at that particular pool tell me the way where to come sir 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 i i agree i agree with you i agree with you one example was given by sumit sir in our previous session that one signal itself different authorities are naming it differently there are problems yes we are slowly coming out with solutions we have still not matured to a level that all the urban uh, bodies different bodies have collaborated they have started collaborating it will study may not be a tech savvy it will take some time because these technologies have been adopted by authorities also in last 5 6 years and everybody is not savvy to these technologies it will take some time to stabilize for them to understand how they can use those sops in the best manner so there are certain come, inherited yeah. problems unfortunately and there comes yes. the need of the you know training to be done for the grassroots yeah. people yeah. and that is why i am just referring my name is hani charnalia and i represent a training company called rio global services okay. so we are a training partner with yeah. a lot of companies so anybody good. need some support just good selling me. point <laughs> free publicity please go to him for training <laughs> and so over to you sir for your closing remarks uh, yeah. so can we have some closing remarks from you if no you no i think uh, you it's okay. over to you ma'am thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen let's put our hands together for all those wonderful presentations we had as i request our session chair dr choudhury on behalf of the organizers to do the honors of presenting a memento to all our eminent speakers we begin with mr prashant oberoi head national sales e governance northern communications thank you sir for that wonderful presentation to dr chinmay hegre managing director estricos consulting private limited thank you sir once again to mr vaibhav chauhan head smart city and traffic cms computers thank you very much indeed for that wonderful presentation to mr shailesh purohit business head smart cities display solutions business unit delta electronics india private limited thank you once again sir for that wonderful presentation to mr saurabh agarwal ceo tech bridge and to mr brijesh miglani sse security strategist force point Thank you Dr Choudhury for doing the honors may I request for a group photograph of the complete panel as we break for lunch the lunch break will be of 45 minutes only requesting everybody to be back and seated in time for the concluding session of this conference which is a panel discussion thank you <laughs>